Hello, here's another little short story for you. This one's called A Monster Under the Bed. Jo loved college. She loved her psychology course. She liked the mental discipline, the routine. But more than anything, she loved living away from home. A long way away. She shared the flat with four young women all with different backgrounds and on different courses, but that didn't matter. They hit it off straight away, and soon they shared the easy familiarity of people who've been friends for years. They all liked to spend a night out at the college bar or in one of the clubs in town, but sometimes they were just as happy to sit around the kitchen table, sharing bottles of cheap red wine and tales of even cheaper boyfriends until the small hours of the morning. And that suited Jo fine. She'd never been one to go early to her bed. The first term flew by in a whirl of lectures, seminars and nights out with the girls. There were always plenty of boys hanging around on the fringes of Jo's friendship group. But apart from a couple of mildly entertaining dates, there'd been no one serious. She hadn't studied so hard and got into a good college just so that she could waste her time chasing boys. And then suddenly it was Christmas break, and almost overnight it seemed as though the whole campus emptied. Except for Jo. She was staying put over Christmas and that was that. At first her friends asked her why she wasn't leaving, but she shrugged their questions away. By now they knew each other well enough for her friends to see that there was something she didn't want to tell them. But there was something in her expression something cold and distant in her glance that told them not to pursue it. Instead, her flatmates hugged her and promised to call, and then were whisked away in a flurry of smiling parents and taciturn taxi drivers. Jo spent the next morning at the supermarket, buying enough food to stock the fridge for at least two weeks. She even bought herself a really nice bottle of red wine for a treat. Then, in the afternoon, she settled herself at her desk and switched her mind to study mode. And she had plenty to occupy her. The pile of books she'd bought back from the college library... The pile of books she'd brought back from the college library was so tall that it was in constant danger of toppling over. She ran a finger across their spines. She'd chosen well. Not content with revisiting the previous term's work on developmental psychology, she planned to cover the forensic psychology material that she was due to start in the following term. She smiled. By the time the rest of the students returned, she'd be streets ahead of them all. She selected the thickest volume, the one that looked the most challenging, and opened it at the contents page. Her laptop was fired up, her desk lamp was adjusted perfectly. She was ready. It took three and a half hours before the silence began to gnaw at her. She took a break and made a mug of lemon and ginger tea. She was tempted to raid her flatmate's cupboards and make herself a strong coffee. But no, she hadn't touched caffeine for years and she mustn't start now. She took her mug back to her desk. Work. Keep busy. She needed to saturate her mind to blot out the empty rooms and echoing corridors that hemmed her in on every side, threatened to engulf her. Work would be her world. Jo could study longer than almost everyone she knew. But after nine hours with only minimal breaks for food and drink, she had to admit that she'd hit her limit. She rubbed her eyes and blinked to refocus on the textbook, but somehow she'd lost her place on the page. Again. It was time to give in and get some rest. The ritual of getting ready for bed was always the same. The strict routine of brushing her teeth, flossing, cleansing her skin and moisturising could not be changed. But tonight, everything felt different. The flat was so quiet, she couldn't help but be aware of its insistent emptiness. 
She hummed a tune she'd heard on the radio the day before, but soon realised that she could only remember the chorus, and that was more irritating than the silence. There was nothing for it but to get into bed and hope that her hard day's work would reward her with a good night's sleep. A foolish hope. When the quilt tangled itself around her legs for the seventh time, she sighed and rubbed at her eyes. Pointless, she thought. Hopeless. A complete waste of time. She flipped her pillow over, let her head sink onto the creased cotton, closed her eyes and tried again. And this time she managed to slip into a fevered half-sleep. But now the twisted bedclothes are restless fingers grasping at her arms and legs, holding her down. And the quiet click-click of the heating pipes as they cool echoes the brutal rhythm of a knuckle wrapped against the middle of her forehead over and over again until every impact shudders through her tortured mind. And then she sees the faces of her tormentors leering, taunting. They don't like her. They don't like her clothes, the way she cuts her hair short. They don't like the way she can run faster than them, throw a ball further. They hate her. And now the fear rushes through her, drains the blood from her face. But she doesn't have to put up with this. She's stronger than them, tougher, harder and her fear freezes, solidifies, becomes a block of pure writhing anger, and it explodes within her, a dizzying surge of vengeance, of violence. Stop them, hurt them, cut them down, make them wish they'd never been born. Joe's eyes flew open, her chest heaved against the sweat-soaked sheets. It wasn't my fault, she whispered. I didn't mean to do it. And as she stared up at the ceiling, she made her vow, as she had done so many times before. I'll never hurt anyone, she swore to herself, never again. She turned on her side, buried her face in the pillow and sobbed. She shouldn't still be punishing herself this way. It wasn't fair. It had all happened so long ago. She'd just been a kid, for God's sake. Those miserable days were gone. She'd put them behind her, hidden them away. Now, no one could ever guess at what she'd done. No one. Unless, of course, they read the file. But that damning document was carefully hidden, sealed in the locked case that she'd pushed as far as she could under the bed. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little story called A Monster Under the Bed by me, Mikey Campling. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch uh, and or listen. Um, if you'd like more free stories, do head over to MikeyCampling.com and there's free stories there to read, to listen to, to watch as videos. Uh, please feel free to share the video uh, and comment here on YouTube or over on my site. Commenters are the best people in the world, aren't they? Sharers are even better people. Sharers are great people. So be a good person and share stuff. Uh, and thanks very much for taking the time. If you really want to get a bit more value from my stories, there are extra versions like audio files to download and so on uh, for my wonderful subscribers uh, who sign up to join, become a member of the Awkward Squad. And then they get access to all kinds of free things, free books, free stories, free audio stories and so on be great to have you along. Thank you very much again and see you next time. Bye.